and welcome. Thank you for joining me in the video today. This is my most recent project. What you are seeing here is a bass clarinet, but not just any bass clarinet. While most bass clarinets are pitched in the key of B-flat, this instrument is very special because it's pitched a minor third below in the key of G. This is an instrument I've wanted to build for a very long time, and I'm really excited to show you guys more about this project. So without further ado, let's get started. To start off, I'd like to take a moment to talk about the design of this instrument. So looking generally at the shape of the instrument, you can see that it vaguely looks like a bass clarinet with a few notable differences, most obvious being the neck. So whereas your average B-flat bass clarinet has a fairly relatively flat tenor saxophone-like neck, this instrument has a much steeper bend going into a vertical ascending section followed by a 180 degree turn down to the main body section of the instrument. And the reason this was done is so that the mouthpiece would be in roughly the same position relative to the left hand. That way, anybody who is familiar with bass clarinet could theoretically pick up this instrument and it would feel fairly comfortable and familiar to them. Now, looking at the rest of the instrument, obviously both body sections are 3D printed, but I think the most distinct thing about this instrument is the key work. Now, 3D printing keys is definitely the biggest design challenge with this instrument. So, of course, with plastic, it's not going to be as stiff or strong as metal. So what I had to do was I had to make the key work thicker to compensate. So you can see, like, for example, the key arms on a standard uh, B-flat bass clarinet or really pretty much any member of the clarinet family, the key arms are usually going to be about three millimeters, four millimeters wide. Here, the key arms are actually around a centimeter wide, so significantly wider, which helps add stiffness and strength to the keys so you don't feel a lot of flex when you're playing the instrument. Uh, looking at the rest of the instrument, this instrument has a simplified berm system keyword. So what I mean by that is most of the standard keys that you would expect on a berm system instrument are still there. So for example, in the upper register, F natural, F sharp is still uh, the standard fingering. Uh, same in the lower register, F natural, F sharp. Although there is an open tone hole here, which is a feature I copied off of instruments from the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Uh, and of course, um, going uh, from the top down, you have your A, A flat, uh, that's still there. You still have an E flat sliver key um, and also the side trill key. Although note, the three top trill keys are not present, much like the LeBlanc contrabass clarinets. Uh, going down the instrument, uh, you still have your C sharp, G sharp, although on this instrument it's a bit different because it's a, a lever key as opposed to the standard pivot key that you're used to seeing on modern instruments. And that was simply done because it would have been very difficult to try and fit a standard pivot key on this instrument. Um, there is no F sharp, B natural sliver key on this instrument, although I am planning on adding it on the next prototype, uh, looking at the pinky keys. So fortunately there are all four pinky keys on the, uh, the lower joint. Um, so that's very handy, but the left FC pinky key is unfortunately missing. But other than that, um, it is a pretty much standard instrument as far as fingering goes. Um, the fingering positions are actually quite comfortable. I was very surprised how well it came out. Um, it does feel a little bit bulky, but it's not extremely bulky. Like, if you're used to playing contrabass clarinet, this instrument won't feel that alien to you. Now, the only other thing to mention, um, unfortunately, because uh, 3D printed technology just really isn't there, it would have been impossible to add a fully automatic register vent system. So what I did was I had manual register vents. So this is, again, something you see on instruments uh, from late 19th, or early 20th century. Uh, so essentially, uh, for the notes clarion B to clarion uh, E flat or so, you use the first vent, and then everything above that, you use the second vent. Now, the good thing, though, is that there is some overlap. So, for example, the upper vent will work down to about uh, C sharp, and the lower vent will work up to about G. So you don't have to constantly worry about switching between that vent for certain pieces. So it's not as hard to learn as you might think. And 
to finish it off, I do just have uh, a fairly standard bell with one of my uh, uh, 3D printed uh, bell sections on it. Um, mostly I did that just so I have a floor peg, which makes this instrument much more comfortable to play. So yeah, it does vary quite a bit from your standard bass clarinet, um, but in many ways it's also very familiar. Uh, also to talk about the neck, um, it just uses a standard bass clarinet mouthpiece and it does have a tuning slide uh, like most other modern professional bass clarinets. Now I'm sure the thing you're wondering is why build a bass clarinet in the key of G? It seems like a really weird key for a bass clarinet. And you would be correct in that. Now there are no shortage of weird and unusual members of the clarinet family. And in fact, you can probably purchase a clarinet in almost every key, save for a few. So why do we need more sizes of clarinets? Well, I think a big part of the reason I wanted to do this project is just to see if it could be done and what the results would be. Sometimes an experiment is unsuccessful and there is a very good chance that this instrument will never catch on and will fade into obscurity. And I'm perfectly okay with that. I think a big part of the reason for doing these projects is to experiment with different sizes of instruments to see if there might be a viable reason to have such a musical instrument. With this bass clarinet in G, there are possibly a few different scenarios where you might want to use this over the standard B5 bass clarinet. For example, if you're playing a piece with lots of sharps, this might be fairly useful. Or if you're looking for a slightly darker tone color than the bass clarinet, but don't necessarily want to use a great bass or contra alto clarinet, this might be a viable alternative. But we're never going to know whether this is actually a viable instrument until somebody actually builds one and tries it out. And that's exactly what I wanted to do. I'm sure many people are wondering what are the differences in tone between the G bass clarinet and a standard B flat bass clarinet. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play a few scales on the G bass clarinet and my friend over here is going to be playing a few scales on a relatively standard B flat bass clarinet. Now to give a quick comparison, this instrument has a 24 millimeter bore and that instrument has a 23.6 millimeter bore. And we're going to be using the same mouthpiece read and ligature for both play tests. So let's get started. <laughs> From that demonstration, you can hear that it does have a very similar tone color to the B flat bass clarinet, which is to be expected. However, I would hear a very slight difference in tone, especially around the changes in registers, which makes a lot of sense. So I don't expect this to be a very common and widespread instrument, and I certainly don't expect it to replace the standard B flat bass clarinet, but I do think it could still have some uses in certain niche applications. Now here's an interesting question. Is this instrument sitting beside me the first bass clarinet in the key of G in existence? Well, possibly. There is one other reference to another instrument that may have potentially been made, and this can be found in the clarinet by Rendell. In a section regarding contra basset horns, or instruments one octave below the basset horn, Rendell writes, The second was announced by Ernst Schmidt, the well-known maker of Mannheim in the 1930s. It was stated to be pitched in G and to descend to written D. So if this section is to be believed, there was an instrument made in the 1930s that would have technically been the first known bass clarinet in the key of G. However, it's not exactly clear if this instrument actually existed. Of course, the instrument has not shown up in any museums, nor have any collectors claimed to own it. To further dissect this sentence, we'll notice that Rendell uses the word announced which could potentially mean that this was just a planned project that never came to fruition. Given that Mannheim was heavily bombarded during the Second World War, there's a good chance that this instrument may have also been completely destroyed, leaving no trace besides this one sentence. And it's also worth noting that this book was first published in 1954, meaning there could be 20 or more years between the supposed creation of this instrument 
and the only documentation we have of it. So it's not clear whether this was potentially a rumor or an actual instrument that was built, but it does seem that we may never know unless somebody comes forward with an instrument. So given that, I think for right now, it's safe to say that this is the first well-documented G-based clarinet until more evidence is presented, which I think is a really cool proposition saying that I actually invented my own size of clarinet. That's something that not a lot of people can say, and it's something that really hasn't been done since the 70s with the Opto Contralto clarinet. And I think there is still a lot more to do with this instrument. I think inventing something is definitely exciting, but I think the bigger challenge is going to be really refining this instrument. Right now it certainly plays, but there's definitely a lot of problems with it. And I hope to spend the next few months refining the design and making something that I could potentially even sell to the general public. So with that, I thank you all for watching this video and I'm excited to show you further developments on the instrument as they come along. So with that, thank you everyone. I hope you all have a wonderful day.